Now, I wanted to ask you, tell people about your run at EVO. How did your matches go? Um, they went pretty well. In my round one pool, the only reasonably hard person I had was Loki, the Ganon from Japan, who's currently studying in Montreal. So I beat him. Then after that, a lot of strange things happened in my next pool. So I had hybrid first round, then ice, and then a lot of strange things happened on the other side of the bracket. I think Hax lost to Zenguzen, and also earlier in round one pools, Ark lost to MACD, so Nintendo ended up playing Ark and the, the Texas Marth player. And Nintendo beats him, then he beats Zangazin, so to make top 16, I had to beat Nintendo in an Ice Climber Ditto. And I like Ice Climber Dittos, and I think I'm pretty good at them, so I won that. Then I played Armada, did okay one game, did really badly the next. Then I was in Losers, and then I had to play Chillin' Dude to make top 8, and I 2 0 him. And so, that, that was all for Saturday. And, well, some of that was Friday, but those are the first two days. And Sunday, all I did was play Dr. PP, and... He beat me 2-1 in a pretty close set. Uh, I was mostly okay with how I played. I think I made reasonable adaptations. I made one really bad mistake in the third game in where I tried to grab the edge before he could side B, but I just ended up getting hit. And I had Nana doing a blizzard just so she wouldn't do something stupid, but that ended up preventing me from being able to use her to do an up B to save myself. And that ended up mattering a lot. So... I try not to think about it too much, because I know if I do, I'm just going to think, oh, I could have had that set. I was get angry, so I'm just trying to forget about that. So, yeah, that's how it went. Cool. Now, I wanted to ask you, your Sopo game, on another level compared to any other Ice Climber main, uh, how do you keep it together when you have such a limited character? Um, Popo still has a lot of pretty good traits. He has a three-frame jump squad and low friction, so he has a very good wave dash. He has a good shield. Um, incidentally, going along with good friction stats, he has a good wave line on the platforms. And just generally speaking, his move set is pretty solid in a lot of respects. The moves are generally somewhat disjointed. Pretty disjointed, actually. Maybe not necessarily, they might not necessarily have the most range, but they're disjointed at least, so I can still beat a lot of things with them. Um, he has lots of attacks that come out quickly and lead to good positions, like forward tilt's a frame 6 move, down smash is also frame 6, and these are things that can potentially lead to tech chases or just stuff approaches. Then he also he still has a lot of reasonable good qualities that both ice climbers do. Like he doesn't necessarily hit as hard as a pair of ice climbers does, and he can't do any desyncs or anything like that. But there are, there is some good that comes with it. First of all, you still have access to a lot of the same bread and butter combos with what you do with Ice Climbers. Like, Dash attack will still lead to a lot of things. Up air will steal the combo into itself and other aerials. You can still tech chase pretty well. You don't hit as hard, but it's still okay. And there was something else I was going to say. Oh yeah, and another nice little thing is when you don't have Nana around, you don't need to worry about doing things that might desync them. Like, Nana can't pivot, so if you try to dash dance with just Popo, Nana's just going to get kind of tripped up. And it does have its uses. Um, still, I mean, Ice Climbers generally use that for desyncing, which is kind of a very untraditional use of dash dancing, but it's what a pair of Ice Climbers generally uses dash dancing for. But with Popo, since you don't need to worry about tripping up Nana and having her get all confused. You can just d dash dance pretty freely. And Popo actually has a pretty solid dash dance. So I think he still has a lot of pretty reasonable attributes. And I don't think he plays too differently from a pair of Ice Climbers, outside of some details of punishment and some details in neutral. Like, I can't really use Blizzard as much and stuff like that. And that only matters a lot in some matchups. So, yeah. Cool. Now, you're also known as one of the most innovative and also creative players. How do you break down the game to find more optimal strategies and new ways to use your character? Um, most of the things I come up with, I try to come up with to solve specific problems I encounter in the game. Like, one thing that I don't do that much, but I do sometimes, would be, let's say, shield stunt desyncs, which is when an attack hits both Ice Climbers for shields at the same time. Well, then they'll exit shield stun at the same, t same time, and if I do an input within six frames of their shared shield stun ending, then Popo won't act on it, but Nana receives the input six frames late, so she will. So I can tell her to do something like a blizzard, a jump blizzard out of shield while Popo keeps shielding after an attack hits my shield. And the reason I thought of that was because uh, I was having a really hard time fighting Captain Falcons out of shield, like he would need my shield. I didn't really have any good responses to it. The best thing I had most of the time was this kind of weird side B out of shield desync that was okay but not great so i was thinking is there anything else i can do if he hits my shield just and eventually when just brainstorming that idea came to me so there's that 
see, I mean, for the most part, most of what I do is very grounded in reality. I'm not one to just necessarily sit around and just think, hey, what can I do? What random arbitrary things can I come up with? I prefer to come up with things to address um, very specific issues that I'm struggling with. And every now and then I'll just come up with something somewhat arbitrarily, but for the most part it is pretty grounded in reality. Cool. Now my last question, uh, what are the origins of your name and what does it signify? Um, let's see, I think I became aware of Competitive Smash in mid-2006 and I was signing up for some Nintendo forum and at the time I played Mario and Luigi in Melee and I wanted a name that was kind of relevant to Nintendo, probably the Mario series in particular, although I don't remember too clearly, but not in a really obvious way. And some way or another I learned that the Mario Mushrooms, um, the famous relatively circular ones that are, with the red cap and the white spots are based on the most common subspecies of Amanita muscaria, which is a mushroom that generally has a red cap and white spots. There are subspecies with different colors, but that's the most common one. And it had a few other common names, like Fly Agaric is a common one, which is what I am on Twitch, and Fly Amanita is another. And I just liked the way it sounded, and it, it served what I was looking for in that it was a somewhat not obvious Nintendo reference, so I went with that. Now, before we wrap up the interview, where can people get a hold of you on Twitter or Twitch? Um, on Twitter, I'm at Master of Caribou. No underscores or anything, just the words. And on Twitch, I'm Fly Agaric. That's F L Y A G A R I C. Uh, it's easier to contact me on Twitter if people want things. I am on Twitch a lot. I don't really stream much, if ever. It's been a while, but. Yeah, you could still, if you want to contact me, they could still reach me there via PM there. So Cool. That wraps up our interview. Thank you so much, sir. Take care, guys.